Good day and welcome to my first ever game design devlog. Today I'll be tackling the wave collapse function in Godot game engine, or at least my attempt at it. I hesitate to call it the wave collapse function as my knowledge of the theoretical physics is quite limited. As far as I know it has something to do with particles versus waves and superpositions and something to do with dead cats and boxes, which I've always thought to be quite a poor metaphor. I own a microwave, it's a little bit faulty. When I cook my food, I have no idea until I open the door whether that food will be cooked or not. You could say that until I open the door, that food is both cooked and uncooked. And that's pretty much the idea we'll be dealing with today. Games such as Minecraft or Terraria use procedural noise to generate their landscapes. Although the landscape is randomized, it tends to be predetermined. That is, it relies on a seed, and anyone who has that seed will have the same world. On the other hand, the wave collapse function generates landscapes that will be completely different every time you see them, as they are generated using random numbers on the fly. And you could say, if you want to be all Russell Brand about it, that the realities generated by the wave collapse function only exist when you observe them which is quite a solipsistic way of seeing things. I have no knowledge of theoretical physics, as I said, so I just tried my best to replicate what I saw. If you want to see more of what this function can do, I suggest you check out this guy's work. He inspired me to make this game. I began by creating a grid and scanning it in a spiral fashion. I feel it's best to get things up and running as quickly as possible and not to worry too much about the procedure because as soon as you can see what's happening it's much easier to figure out what to do next. Every block has a assessed value and once it's been checked that value becomes true and that's what I use to navigate around the blocks. It's a very simple function and it was created for the purpose of getting it out as quickly as I can and testing the matching algorithm. As you can see I started having some success at this point, although the landscape is quite simple and as you can see it, it veers up to the right. When you click close to the edges you get some quite chaotic results. As you can see here there's some very interesting geometry. At this point I started creating these squares which gave a feeling of having windows into a world which is something that I really want to lead towards with this game. The idea behind the wave collapse function is that you have a set of tiles that fit together with certain rules and the more tiles you have the more difficult it is to solidify the rules you have to rely on brute force and recursive functions thought it would be nice to add a little bit of uh, visual interest so i paint a little house in photoshop and a few trees and i felt it really uh, started to bring the game alive and it also just indicates the direction I would like to take the game in uh, concerning the scale. Some games have uh, very large characters that walk around. I'm going for more of a strategy or god-like feel with very small characters and buildings. The wave collapse function is very versatile in that it can generate almost any structure as you can see in this artist's work. <sighs> Truly breathtaking, that's why I'm doing this. This is not a tutorial, this is just a log of my development. I wouldn't be able to explain it to you really if I tried. Hopefully by the end of the video you might have a better understanding and I will get into the nitty gritty of the functions uh, later in the video. At the moment the functions are very chaotic as I'm adding lines of code haphazardly to see what happens. And as I uh, develop and as the days go by I sort out the code and refactor it to make it far less complicated and uh, take up less space. I reduced about 600 lines to 200. I really want to emphasize the point that I'm starting simple and escalating the problem as I go on. In fact, I'm getting things to a stable position and then breaking them to see how things work. 
at the moment the wave collapse function is very basic and this is just a speedy version of it. At this point I started having quite a bit of success with the map generator so I started turning my attention to other things such as the UI and new modes such as this diamond mode which happened quite organically. It was actually a mistake that I decided to keep in. It, actually, it generates the map better than the square method. With this map generation in place I turned my attention to the edit button which allows you to edit the landscape in a small local area. It's a good time to point out that I split my script into four classes. The main class that controls the modes and the inputs, a tiler class that has a matrix of tiles which is its own class that sets up the images. The tiler class has a spiral method which navigates the grid and explores it and also an edit method. The fourth and final class is the assessor class which generates random tiles and checks to see whether they fit on the board. It has two checking functions. One, the simple check, which only checks two tiles, which is used for the spiral function of the tiler, and a basic check, which checks all four sides simultaneously, which is a requirement of the wave collapse function. While object-orientated programming has served me well in this project, I feel like there's certain circumstances where it's just best not to. For example, the edit button could have made use of the spiral class, but I decided to recreate it from scratch because sometimes recreating a function will reveal weaknesses in the original one. Having object-orientated programming in your mind from the beginning of a project can actually delay you because you spend too much time focusing on creating efficient code rather than creating something. It's just true that sometimes I would prefer two separate classes or functions with very specific purposes rather than one super function with many caveats. There are times where general solutions can be very confusing because making small changes to a function that is designed to deal with everything affects everything at the same time. So it's better to work specifically and then generalize later, I feel. The edit function was intended to test out the wave collapse function by inserting specific tiles into the landscape and having the adjacent tiles, the tiles around it, adapt to accommodate the new tile into the environment. The trouble really comes in here when you start adding new tiles to the set because the possibilities for connections expands exponentially every time you add a new tile to the collection. At this point I was quite happy in how the edit mode was feeling. It was starting to feel quite satisfying and the amount of bugs had reduced quite significantly. But as you can see it gets quite out of hand when you push it to its limits, which is something you should always be trying to do. Attempt to break it in order to find its weak spots and make it stronger. The game is starting to take on quite a meditative feel and I feel quite peaceful while playing it. One of my favorite games from childhood was Black and White and I recently completed Creature Isle, the expansion pack for the first time. And I must say, for anyone who hasn't played it, it's highly rec recommended. It's on abandonware.com. But my point is that with this little mobile application, I, I want to attempt to recreate the feeling that Black and White gave the users. And I feel like the wave collapse function is an appropriate function for a god game as you are creating worlds on the fly as you look at them and everything that you see in front of you is your creation as you are god. In the game, certain blocks require more conditions than others such as these corner blocks which can only be placed in very specific circumstances. And you can compare that to a very obvious case like the sky block which has sky on all four sides and absolutely no orientation in life. 
I hooked up the edit button to the spiral function just to see what would happen and these were the results which was pretty crazy. One thing I learned when creating the conditions for the tile placement was that when you have a long list of logical statements with and and or connections it's best to use negatives. It's just easier, in the same way that it's easier to list the women who haven't rejected me rather than the women who have. I added some rounded variants to the corner blocks and the landscape really started to evoke architecture, which I, I quite like. Building really started to become fun and I can definitely see the game going in this direction in the future. Uh, becoming some kind of city building game. Won't be too difficult or it'll take we'll be changing a few pictures and hours of soul crushing text smashing. But that's a topic for devlog 2. Back to the bugs. While things were going quite well there were certain situations where the blocks just weren't placing and I really couldn't figure out why this was happening. I kept going back and double checking my logic and second guessing myself and thinking I was crazy and no matter how hard I tried I just couldn't do it. I created some debugging tools. These helped me realize that the script was choosing the right block but it was refusing to place it because it wasn't sure that it was the right block. These print statements got these results which on the face of it don't make any logical sense. I, I have a function saying do these two things equal and it says that they do and the result says that they don't. So whenever I thought I had solved the issue I found out later that my solution had only created other issues elsewhere. And the more I checked my logic the more I was convinced that something supernatural was happening. But I take it that I'm just not smart enough to figure it out. Because of the random nature of the algorithms within the while loops, you have situations that can go on forever, constantly guessing and never finding the correct solution. I have no idea if this is correct, but my feeling is that when you add enough tiles to the set, making rules to sort out which tile should be placed becomes almost impossible. And a solution which had been forming at the back of my mind started to become more and more viable and it, it worked. The solution in the end was to simply cut the loop and call the function again on itself for every adjacent tile and then repeat that process every single time it ran into a problem. This recursive solution ensured that the loop would always terminate and that a tile would be always placed and that the adjacent tiles would change to accommodate it. The solution worked like magic and I'm quite happy with the results. It was quite satisfying that the solution was a recursive function and it made me think of Douglas Hofstetter and make me wonder about the nature of reality and the real wavelength whatever whatever wave collapse function anyway thank you very much for watching and to end off i'm just going to leave you with this montage of trailers for upcoming videos that i and stuff that i've been working on such as these oil paintings Half a part of most that's made with wine or jeans A super saiyan agent of annihilation Lord, for the purpose that's a secret to the nation And I know that you will always know